Welcome to Third Eye Visions. My name is Anthony Parker. If this be your first time, make sure to hit the notification bell and make sure to hit that box that says all because if you don't, you're going to miss out on a lot of videos that I post. And make sure to like, share, and um, basically tell a friend. Uh, today, I want to introduce you to a YouTube channel which is entitled Professor Blindy. That's Professor spelled and Blindy, B-L-I-N-D-I-E. This channel is very well orchestrated and channeled toward the blind and visually impaired as well because she does a lot of video descriptions. The host is a 24-year-old from Dallas, Texas. Her name is Ariane. She's also a businesswoman as well. So y'all go check her out, man. I'm telling you, put the link in the description. But anyway, today I want to talk about this topic, which is parenting while blind a blind mom's journey. Now, this topic hasn't, to my opinion, been talked about enough, especially when it comes to blind or visually impaired people who wish to become parents. Over the years, I've done these type of shows. I've even learned in the process there in, that in some cases, the courts want to take away uh, kids uh, from the parents who may be visually impaired or blind because they feel that they are incapable of taking care of their own children. Now, I did a lot of top did a lot of topics about this. Y'all need to go check it out. I may revisit this sometime in the future. But anyway, that's a topic for another discussion. But let's get into what I'm here today to talk about, which is Blind Mom's Journey, uh, featuring a young lady by the name of Professor Blindy. Today I just want to get uh Ariane, I may switch up every once in a while, perspective as a newly blind mom and allow her mom's uh, perspective on this issue as well because her mother had a few apprehensions uh, during her daughter's uh, blind mom journey. So without further delay, as we take a listen and view the video, we'll see that Professor Blind's mom had some major concerns. She went through a great deal of emotions, but in the end, let's see what happened. Um, my honest first reaction was like fear and concern. Um, just because you had just finished Chris Cole and started to learn how to um, really be responsible and live on your own independently with your uh, blindness. blindness. So I was just like, wow. So not just a baby, but two babies. It was, I don't know. It took me. That it, yeah, it, it did something. And then I was just like, when I finally got over that, I was just like, okay, we'll make it work. We're just gonna make it happen. And then I was like, it, there was a part of me that was sad that was like, dang, she's gonna have these babies and not be able to actually see what they look like. Yeah. So that was a sad, that was a, that was the kind of sad reaction that I had about it later on as I thought about it. But, um, yeah, we kind of overcame all of that, so. These were some major, I mean, major concerns that Professor Blindy's mom had for her. Now, she didn't doubt that her daughter could perform the test. She just had some concerns. Let's check out some of those major concerns that her mother had for her daughter. The smallest thing, making a bottle, um, changing a pamper, bathing them, wiping them down, like being careful about the umbilical cord because like even a person with their vision, you have to, you know, those are things you have to be very mm -hmm. careful about. And um, so that, that was a concern. Um, though those are concerns. Just My like pretty even... Too. They were really small. Just like, even with you holding them, and I knew you wouldn't, uh, I mean, I knew you would be uh, protect them at all costs, but it was just kind of like, just learning to um, to be a mom, you know, just like even, learn, even with the breastfeeding was kind of like, yeah, that was, <laughs> even that was like, yeah, the breastfeeding, um, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Even though Professor Blindy's mom had these concerns, she in the process had to let her daughter be a mom and perform these motherly duties in spite of her being blind. Sort of like fall back as she put it. 
Let's check out this clip. I started out like just taking over. Like I'm here, I, I change the pamper and always, oh, oh, I feed them, oh, I'll do, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. well, she's gonna have to learn how to do this. You need to yeah. learn the experience, to talk, the experience of motherhood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like these are her babies, she needs to know. And I'm like, I'm, I just sat there one day, I thought about it, I'm like, I'm sure she feels a way that I don't let her do a lot of stuff. I don't let her do it. I was like, let me fall back. Let me just fall back. Because, yeah, I felt that. Now, Professor Blondie's mom asked a very important question, an honest one at that. While she was not allowing her daughter to actually be a mom and perform her motherly duties, she posed a question to her. Was I being overbearing? And here's what Professor Blondie Say it. Did you feel like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. it, very, so. very overbearing. And it was like, oh, okay, hold on. So. Yeah. <laughs> These are my children. <laughs> Man. This is a sad one here. Not only did Professor Blindy had to deal with raising her children as a blind mom, she also had to deal with the loss of her son. See, she had twins and one of them passed away. This was very emotional for them as well as me while listening to it because I have a son and I don't know what would happen to me if something would have happened uh, to him then and even now. Let's take out check out this clip. I don't, I don't deal with the situation very well. I kind of, I think I pretty much blocked it mm -hmm. out and, mm -hmm. and just kind of like by focusing more on rock because so it seems like as soon as Kale passed, like, um, rock automatically just took on a lot of his characteristics and personality. Yeah. So in my mind, I think I deal with it by thinking like I have two babies in one. Yes. So I kind of, that's how I kind of deal with it. And so, um, the fact that it happened when I was out of town, sometimes I feel like I just still put myself, put us in two separate places in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, he's out of town, and I'm so you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're, we're just separated. And so, I feel like I, I do that. So, yeah. That's kind of how I cope with it. Mm -hmm. For now. Until I get to that grief counseling, she give me some other advice on how to handle it. Yeah, because yeah. I'm still not really able to look at a lot of his pictures and videos, and we have so many, but it's just really hard to see his face to mm -hmm. look at him. Because yeah. I, And I guess I think because for me, it makes it real. Mm -hmm. And I, as, when I look at his, see his pictures, I'm like, he's really not here. He's really gone. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really to that point right now. Here's how Professor Blindy felt. Um, I have my Kel Bear. He's right there above us. I take my baby everywhere with me. I have on his iron necklace. My sister bought my son's um, bracelets when they were born. And I have his bracelet on because he wore it and it's adjustable. I, I just wear my son everywhere I go. I It's really hard for me actually um, trying to... Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's how you feel. Yeah, and tell mommy about it. And what? But I just, I kind of just, I, I hold on to my bear a lot because for me, it's not a visual aspect. I can't, you know, physically see that he isn't here. I have to, I've been feeling him not being here. Like, I, I know the difference from going to go pick up one baby when I was able to pick up two. I know the difference from when Rocky cries and when he cries. Mm -hmm. And I still sometimes, a lot of the times, search for him when I, um, like, the when, when I feed Rock, it's like hard to not, I stay up sometimes because I'm like expecting to hear another baby cry to feed mm -hmm. my second baby and like my baby isn't here anymore. So. I've just been trying. I've been trying. I stay very productive. I, would, I, ha I go to therapy. Um, but I think I really need like an intensive grief counseling. In the end, Professor Blindy asked her mom a question that a lot of blind people, visually impaired people, or people who have other types of uh, disabilities want to ask their mothers when going through 
raising their kids. It was very important. It was very honest. Here's the question. If I had my vision, do you think that you would have been as scared? Not as, but yet yeah, still. I would have still had those same thoughts and fears and concerns. I would have. Just because you were you still young you're young mm -hmm. you're young you're a young parent your mother and also because there were two and not yeah. just one and just one baby is a lot so two is like an extremely lot so i knew you were gonna need like a lot of help so i knew i was about to have to put my life on hold everything but my thursday night <laughs> not giving up the crazy crap but yeah um i just knew i was gonna have to fall back and and be real again man i hope y'all enjoyed this video um mm. i want to thank professor blindy or arian for allowing me to use this video and it was very important that her mother came in and shared some um of her insight as to how she was very apprehensive but later on was able to let her daughter be a daughter whether she, you know whether she was visually impaired or not she still had apprehensions but still it was even more concerned because of the fact that she was blind but i must say that i'm quite sure she uh professor blindy has done a remarkable job and um is still doing a, a remarkable job despite what she had to endure and you know losing a child I don't, I don't know how she feels about that or anyone could feel for that matter, but she, you know, she seems to be a very strong young woman and I hope that everything is good for her on that end. So with that being said, I'm going to put the link in the description. Y'all may uh, continue to subscribe. Um, make sure to support these black YouTubers who are visually impaired and trying to do something. So with that being said, my name is Anthony. Mm, this coffee is good. Third Eye Visions. And I'm...